The first poem I'm going to do is called Life Is. Life is not a golden sun rising each day. So many tears concealed. So many words choked off, stifling. So many feelings bottled, fermenting. So many spaces restricted in a world agitating overpopulation. So many places, homes in gaping lives, craving dwellers. Life is not a glinting smile dazzling, so many eyes blinded by its glare. So much aloneness bustling with the crowds. So much pride trampling, so many longings. I miss you. The next poem I'm going to do is called Spring Cleaning. Spring Cleaning. Stretching on a tottering stool of trepidation, you pair inside your memory. In this attic of the brain, moth-eaten dreams may still be found. From the dank of crumbed recesses, mildewed hopes leap out like spooks and disturb you for a burst of spring cleaning. The days that all turn yellow in the evenings are falling off the calendar like autumn leaves. In your yard, choking with too many seasons shed, you rake a pile of years scrawled over with the skims of youth and burn all obsolete thoughts. Despair reinvents in smoke the escalator of your longings. Frazzled as the time that's growing senile, you slouch next to a window to mend some fred drapes and find that you are staring at the journal of your life. Glancing through the chapters of your face, now creased and fading pages, you read some dreary lines of stalled beginnings. Maybe a little dye of rouge and blush will make this tale more colorful. But is there any joy in reading a familiar bedtime story when the children have all flown? And only the mocking laughter of echoes find humor in this fable of contentment? Shuffle back into the attic. Perhaps the other version can still be found. More fanciful, that one lies buried in the clutter of homemaking, where all along discontent led grubs to furrow in the counters of your face and nurture in the cracks of your skin. While carving grooves inside your teeth, you hear their taunting chatter. It's fall, they're saying. Fall, you're affirming, is never too late for spring cleaning. So, Dreamhead, Jeremiah Sonson rolled over on his waterbed, scanned his gutter chamber and started. Flinging aside a cardboard blanket, he shoved fantasies. Get out of my head, he said. Face reality or drop dead. A man must have bread and some ambition. He needs direction. Today, I will not eat scraps from little beans. I will buy a burger. So he tidied the city's pavements, picked up pennies, pushed an old lady's canned drinks cart, logged grocery bags for many, made some money, did not beg any. As midday neared across the city, while hunger read, a man galloped past Paragin Vagrant to fulfillment. Jeremiah hustled nearer his dream burger, needing one more penny, calling every passing female, Sweetie Pie, Jenny. For what better manner of man than a working one? Jingling a pocket load of coins, 
clutching a fistful of hope, carrying a head full of dreams. And I'm sure what I'm about to say next will please John Miller greatly. Thank you. Don't reach for your little bell yet, John. This is my final poem for the evening, my final very short poem. And it's called Fittingly, Suddenly Silent. Suddenly silent. I will remain silent until I have learned to speak. A tongue grown and cured. For when I brag to friends that I'm six feet growing on taller and my heel breaks, in their sight, I am diminished. It pains for me to strain on tiptoe to appear upright. Fallen and near finished, when I can no longer rise to full height, image truly tarnished, I crumble beneath the weight of cargo boasting, landing heavy and humbly. All said, now fear. Noise turns to quiet voice, in speechless serenity is repaired. Because growing and knowing make the self go suddenly silent.